morning. How you all doing? It's good to see faces again. <laughs> well, uh, I guess see the eyes, not the faces. <laughs> well, I'm excited to worship with you today. So I don't know if you still stand up or you prefer to sit down. But whatever you do. So how, like, you know, uh, usually I have been singing by myself in the room. <laughs> so, so I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to forget that you're around. And I encourage you for you to do the same. The Bible says you go to your secret place. Go to your secret place and then just talk to your father. And the one that you seek in the secret, he will reward you publicly. Whew. So I know that you know the Jesus that I know, don't you? Thank you, Jesus, for this morning. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to come to this house, this place. Thank you. Thank you that, like Brother David Parrish spoke last Sunday, that not we only know you, that we know that you know us. So, Father, right now, understanding that we come to this place, that we can be with you. I speak and I pray. You say in your word where you're present is there is healing. Where you're present is there is deliverance. Where you're present is there is peace, there is joy, there is the fullness of who you are. So, Father, I pray that as we worship you today, that we will encounter who you are and the fullness of who you are, that we will have that peace, that we will have that joy, that we will encounter your presence. So we invite you, Holy Spirit, to this place. We invite you, Jesus. Come on and say with me. It's your breath and I lost. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath and I lost. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath and I lost. So we pour out our praise. We pour out. Praise to 
Say it again. You, you give life. You give hope. Great. We are salt you, Jesus. and say with me in an all in all the earth our hearts great all the air all of our family and all the world shout Till I let my head, I will see of the goodness of God. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All of my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake. Your 
Darkness is running out, is running after me. Your goodness is running out, is running after me. My life laid down, surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running out, is running after me. my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God all my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am made I will sing of the goodness of God God, you're so good God you're so good God You're so good You're so good To me Oh God You're so good Yes you are 
Call the cross A to A An hour by hour <laughs> The days are red The sinners say The work of your power Oh God Your soul God, you're so good. God, you're so good. You're so good to Somebody need to declare this and display. I am blessed. I am cold. I am healed. I am whole. I am saved. Jesus name. I live but anointed, filled with your power for the glory of Jesus' name. I am blessed, I am healed, I am saved. Jesus, kindly favor. Woo, feel. I am sad. Woo. <laughs> Highly favored. Feel. I am blessed. I am healed. I am sad. Say one more time and say, God, God. There we go. All right. Praise God. Y'all can be seated if you can. Brother Damien, it's so good to have you here with us this morning. We miss you. you. Really miss you. I'll be glad when something's normal. I don't know what that is. Welcome to Christ Fellowship. Glad you're here with us. Um, 
a few announcements uh, while Damien takes a little bit of a break. Uh, I want to remind you, Pastor Richie's on a sabbatical in Florida, playing a little golf, enjoying being with his family, and I'm, I, I'm very confident he is encountering God every day to come back ready to go to lead our church. Just keep praying for him and his family. Miss Debbie. Uh, in your bulletin today, there was a little insert. That is a list of missionaries that we support every month. So every time you give uh, above your tithe and offering and put it on the missions line, on the tithe envelope, that's where that money goes. We divide it up among all those folks on that uh, list of missionaries, and we do that every month, first of the month. I see what came in last month, and we divide it up and send it out. And uh, so that's an important thing. We don't talk about it very, very much. But uh, we do it every month, and we support these folks, and they have great need, just uh, like our local body does. They have needs there. So if the Lord would lead you to give towards missions, those are the people that it helps. So uh, be prayerful about that. I uh, also want to remind you, uh, we don't take up tithe and uh, our tithes and offering with a uh, offering bag anymore. There's boxes at the front of the sanctuary and by both the doors as you came in. You can put uh, your tithe and offering in there, or you can do it online. And y'all have been so faithful through all these crazy changes in our world. And uh, I know God's faithful, and I'm glad you all are too. Um, also in the bulletin, let's see here. I think there was one thing to... Yeah, I want to remind you about the book table that's out there with a coffee bar. Uh, was previously. Those books are free. They're very uh, helpful and insightful and to challenge you and to help you in your walk with the Lord, and they're free. Uh, you see one you need, I want you, we want you to have it. And if you can make any kind of donation toward those books, there's a basket there you can put the money in. But it's not required. We don't want you not to have a book that would help you in your walk with the Lord because you don't have the money. Don't let that stop you. If there's a book there that speaks to you, grab that thing, take it home, read, study it along with your Bible, those two things together. It's not above the Bible, and I certainly would tell you that. Uh, instructions for leaving today, uh, many of y'all have heard these, and some of you haven't, so I, I review them every week. Uh, this section will uh, exit from the front to the back, out the side door. This section will go from the back to the front, right there out the door by Brother Tom. This section will go from the back to the front, right there where Brother Jim is. And this section will go from the front to the back out the side door right there at dismissal. Uh, got lots of folks in our church family that need prayers, and uh, we're going to pray over them now before, before Damien comes. And uh, I just ask you to agree with me for them. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God, you're so good to us. God, we are so thankful for uh, the Holy Spirit that you sent God to minister to us right where we're at, Father. And I just lift up the folks that are here today. Uh, each one of us, Lord God, have things in our life that we need you to touch. And God, we ask you to touch them, to change them. God, I pray that we'll grow in our faith, that we will chase after you. I lift up Brother Damien to you as he ministers this morning, Father God, and for the folks that are doing kids' ministry. Uh, God, I ask in Jesus' name that uh, you would just anoint them to glorify the name of Jesus. Father, we lift up, uh, these are, uh, have health issues, Lord God, Ronnie Etheridge, uh, Joellen Sanders, Butch Rutledge, uh, Megan Klope, Adam Tarnowski, uh, Linda Holman, Mary Usher, Kenneth Donahue, Judy Runkle, Lori Colburn, Diane Case, Aletha Lucy, Bob Wright, Orville Howard, Hunter Crum, all these have different needs, Lord God, whether it be cancer, whether it be healing from an injury or from a surgery. God, we know the Lord Jesus bore stripes on his back for the healing of our bodies. And God, we pray that you will touch them in Jesus' name, that you will restore them physically. Continue to give Brother Damien good reports with his health. And we thank you for that, Lord God. We just welcome you. Have your way today at Christian Fellowship. In Jesus' name, amen. I forgot to dismiss the kids. I didn't usually Meredith's over here tell me folks. Are you leading that today? Oh, you should have. Hey, Brother Scott, you 
you're old and you forgot something else. So I'm, we'll go ahead and dismiss them. They can just go to the door there and get ushered out with them. Not yet, Oliver. You have to wait. All right. Praise God. Give them a big hand. Brother Damien, have at it, my brother. Thank you, thank you. Whew. Well, I'm excited to be here. Are you? And I'm really excited. So, and I, and I will explain in a couple of minutes why. Hey, you, you stay? Hey, listen, that's good. Just, I was thinking the message was just for you today. I was like, and then I was I guess I messed it. Uh, <laughs> So let me pray. Lord, I thank you one more time. It's not that the Pastor uh, Scott wasn't holy enough to pray, but I want to pray again. So Lord, thank you for this message that you have put in my heart. All I pray that you will touch people where they are. You know what every single person is going through today. And the truth is, you are the answer. There's no doubt about that. So I pray that you will open our heart and our mind. That you will direct my, even my words, Lord, as we read through your word. As we, as we share testimonies, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I'm excited to be here. And for many that know and for many that don't know, I don't know if you know, but I've been going through uh, cancer, uh, bone marrow. And the way that I find out is I was coming back from a mission trip. And as I was coming back, I have a really strong pain on my chest, and that being that I have the sternum broken. And uh, when they hospitalized me, uh, it got to a point that um, they took me just to see my lungs because they knew that it could be that I was fighting pneumonia in that moment. But they want to go inside and see that. So as they go, I'm in the ICU. They take me to go see inside. Uh, by that time, or they already know that I, they diagnosed me with cancer, and I was 50% already advanced. Um, if you stay in that stage, uh, Dr. Cream was saying, listen, you have months, several months, but months of life if you wouldn't do this procedure. But uh, before even that, before all those news and learning how to trust God in the process, uh, they will try to go in with a camera, and as they're trying to go see the lungs, uh, they said that they were losing me. My, uh, you know, so they literally took me out. They didn't even continue the procedure. Just a simple procedure to go inside with a camera and see the lungs. So they come and told my wife uh, they, they were losing me. So that's why they put me back in ICU. So through all this, all I was trying to say is I'm here today thankful that I'm alive. Because it could have been the other way. But going through that, it made me revalue a lot of things. And number one is being thankful. So I, as a Christian Fellowship Associate Pastor, I want to say thank you for going through this process with me in so many different levels, prayer, financially support, name it. But it did change my life even deeper in what I believe Number one is I knew that if I was going to go, I don't want to be proud or cocky like somebody said, but I know where I'm going. And as I was listening to the message of David Parrish last Sunday, he said the important thing is not just that you know God, it's that God knows you. And uh, which I, I, I believe that God knows you, knows me. That's why we worship him. And not only that, how do we know that God knows us? When we are obedient in what he's directing us to do. So when we have learned a, a life of relationship with him, is you know the most important thing is being obedient. That's it. You're obedient in what he called you to do and to be. But going through that, I asked myself this. I knew, number one is I knew, somehow I knew that it wasn't the time for me to leave. And i tell you why. It's because... I believe when God speak, okay, in prophetic ways, so God speak obviously through his word, number one. 
But I remember I was in Dallas, Texas and cried for the nation. And in that moment, God used somebody to speak to my life. And after that day, everything started coming to place. Like, for example, this, uh, this prophetic ministry pulled us out apart from the crowd, more than, I don't know, thousands of people. And she does, I didn't open my mouth, so she doesn't know if I'm Mexican, if I'm from Spain, if I'm Puerto Rican, or if I'm American. But she started talking about the things that God was saying that I was going to do. You know, and, and one is she started talking about Argentina. She doesn't even know me. And then she started talking about Spain. For those who know, I'm a citizen from Spain too. Like sometimes I feel like born identity. I have several different passports. Yeah, last time I brought it and I showed you the proof. But I do. I have different passports from different places. But um, so I, I remember being in that bed and I, I told God, Number one, you revalue this. You revalue that I live in a legacy to my kids. You know, one of my, fa- my, my dad's favorite verse in the Bible is Psalms, and it says, His blessing, his courts have fallen over me. How beautiful the heritage that God has given me. And he's talking about the legacy of Jesus Christ. He's talking about the blessing. My dad is so proud of one thing. That all his kids are serving, serving Jesus Christ. So today my message to you is, if you want to put a title is, are you answering the call of Jesus? Because as I'm in bed, I'm like, I'm not thinking about, Yes, financial, financial is one of the things that I'm leaving my, my wife is stable, that I'm leaving my kids, that I'm not leaving a burden to them. But to be honest, is, is in that moment, financially, I'm not even thinking. I'm thinking that I, this is what I was thinking, that I left strong enough a seal in their life as a father, that their father, their father is God. Do they really know who Jesus is? Because if I'm dying today, I know where I'm going. But have I done a great job to let them know? That was my first thing. So, and then the second one is like, God, you can take me. You're God. You can do whatever you want. But uh, I know that there's more things to do. And I wasn't thinking about, man, I haven't gone to Disney World this year. I wasn't thinking I haven't played golf. I wasn't thinking I didn't go fishing, which all those things probably is amazing. And it's some of the wishes that people have before they die. What I personally was thinking in that moment, I don't think it's time for me to die yet because I haven't preached in Spain yet. I'm serious. Part of everything that you have said have happened. And and you're going to start seeing pictures. That's our church in Argentina. We open it. And for those that don't know, you know, I never talk about this. And some of my friends says, you need to talk about it a little more. Well, you have that in our flyer. We did it as a church, the mission flyer right here. Sometimes we don't talk much about mission. But we opened a church in Argentina. And then that's Pastor Richie and myself. I'm translating. You know, and as I show up on Facebook again, I send it to him. You know, and we were remembering like what God had done in that place and how many people are being save and transform we have christian fellowship argentina and in that sign you can see it christian fellowship which is compañerismo cristiano is in spanish and then it's our center of world mission and evangelism we're using both of them in the same place and you can see the next pictures so that's a facility that god gave us we have nine acres with nine buildings you know where we have been using it as a center and why i'm sharing with all this because this is a confirmation or what God has spoken in my life, that when I'm going through what I'm going through, I realize I'm just like, God, I have tried my best to be obedient, but there's a lot more in that I believe that you want me to do. So, and, you know, just even talking about this, thank you once again for everybody that have been a part in the past and the present, you know, We have missionaries, and and some of you have been put, you know, the way that it it, it used to work in the work, if you want to give anything for the church in Argentina, we put it in the envelope, Mission Argentina. 
You know, and uh, thank you for that. Thank you because that exists because of your generosity and everything that you have been doing. So read this flyer, and honestly, it'd be awesome if we start somehow being even more a part of mission. Why? And I'm not talking just about mission in, in, in other countries. It's about answering the call of what God is asking you to do. And as I'm, the, I'm, I'm the, I don't, you know, they're giving me all these diagnoses that might be living for months, or uh, they're giving me all these things. I know in my heart, I was like, there's, God, there's more to do. There is more to do. There is more to do. And I was like, and I know that we got to do it. Actually, when we were going through all this quarantine, I have been working with Alejandro. I don't know if we can put more pictures there, but you can be seeing pictures in the back. But as, as, as I was uh, going through the quarantine, Alejandro have a, a school. That's Alejandro, actually. <laughs> Out of all the pictures, he got it. Alejandro is a person that was with me in Cry for the Nation in the year of 1999. When they pull us apart and start prophesying, I didn't even know Alejandro. And Alejandro was a guy from Argentina there and cried for the nation too. What a coincidence. But as we are being told what God is going to do, this year, him and I somehow got reconnected again. And he's working with us now with War Mission Christian Fellowship Argentina. And we are targeting now in the beginning of March if... Depends how all this coronavirus go to open a school now in our facility, a Bible school. You know, and it's so amazing because through all this already, let's not talk about what we wanting to do. We have more than 500 homes, churches that we have opened in Argentina with World Mission and Evangelism. Part of the prophecy, you know, thousands of people are going to get saved. More than 500. We have around five people. More than 2,500 people are being congregated today because of Christian Fellowship Bent in Kentucky. You know, and, 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 and I'm, I, right there, I'm showing you pictures because this is more than numbers. For me, it's about the gospel, the simple gospel, taking the gospel this is why, since we started this, we have translated Bible studies to the witchy language. Witchy language have uh, just a few Bibles, but the majority don't even know how to write and read. We have translated Bible study in an audio way with World Mission, with Christian Fellowship. We have provided to many of these people that you're seeing in the middle of nowhere, in, in, in the poorest places right now in Argentina, we have provided Bible study. And those are the people that more than 500 churches are being set in homes. That they are being saved and being baptized, being restored. I didn't put it there, but there was a blind kid and my dad and I went to that place. We have to rent a truck because they don't have port water. The truck come and fill up a little pool. And we baptized this guy, this this blind, and he was celebrating. Why? Because somebody gave him the word of God in his language. Because of that, we translated to the witchy. Then we went and translated. Last year, we finished to translate it to the Warani, another native language. This year, right before the pandemic, we translated to another language, Warani in Paraguay. Damien, what are you trying to say? What I'm trying to say is, you are part of all this. The question is, are you answering the call of what God and Jesus Christ call you to do? I'm just teaming up in the, in the end of David Parrish's message somehow. He said that the important thing is not so much if you know God, but if he, God knows you. Well, I really believe that how did I know that God know me? When I just simply listen, surrender, and obey. You know, as I was talking to my friends, it's like, what did that mean? So what for everybody could mean differently. I didn't ask them to give name or if I can use their name, so I'm going to keep their name out. But I was talking to my friend, and I was like, I was, I'm impressed of people that adopt. You know why? And you know why. Because a kid, they probably have no future. They're adopting. And now they're giving them what? 
legacy, future. But that, what, what we need to check is even deeper is are we giving the legacy of Jesus Christ to them? Because when I was in the bed and I'm, I don't, you know, I'm believing that I'm not going to die. But uh, I'm in that moment. I, I, I got two things that I think. Have I done a great job, guy, to share who you are, the simple gospel to my own family first? Have I done that job to share in Argentina, to share in, in Benton, Kentucky, to share in those that you have given to me? I was talking to my sister-in-law yesterday. She adopted. And I told her, I'm so proud of you. And I was like, and honestly, why did I'm saying this? Because you need to value it. You need to value who you are and what you do instead of measuring yourself with others. And start with you home. When I'm going away, if I'm going away, if I'm the first thing I'm like, have I done a good job? I know that Shelly knew God before she married me. But have I done a good job? Sharing the gospel with my son Isaiah, with my son Seth, with Celeste. So they, if I'm going, yes, they might miss me. But they know who they are in God. And that they continue that legacy, that heritage. So the question tonight of these simple messages, are you answering the call? Are you sharing to your kids who Jesus is for you? You know, and it's so amazing, as I was talking to my friend, I, I realized that some of them have adopted because God specifically told them to adopt. <laughs> Actually, one was a prophecy out of this church. They were praying about it. And then this prophet came and said, you need to listen to your wife. And the wife said, well, I guess that settled it. But to me, I'm so proud. Why? Because right there, you can see what is your call. If he God have direct you to adopt a child, it's because God want you to raise that child knowing who God is. So I applaud you for you to listen to him. So once again, how can I answer to this call? Well, you're doing it right now. Look, let's go to the Bible in Ephesians 4.11. And himself gives some the apostle, some the prophet, some the evangelist, and some pastors and teachers. Okay, I'm going to stop there. How many of you feel that you are in Canada department? That you, you are called to be a, an apostle? That you are called to be a pastor, a teacher, an evangelist? Any? Okay, let me teach you how, how the, I was teaching Christ for the nation. Here you have the apostle. The fatty little one, I'm just kidding, but, but you know why? Because they said an apostle touched all the five ministries, okay? He's a prophet. Ah, that's said the Lord, see? Upon you right there. Here's the evangelist. I'm not going to put it by himself because it's going to be offensive for somebody. But the evangelist is there. Why? I don't know. He's like screaming and sharing the word of God. Here's the teacher's. No, actually the pastor, because they have a sheep by his side. And then the teacher, poor little teacher, I don't know why they let the little one to be a teacher. But, okay, so today I'm not talking about the fivefold ministry, but I'm talking about, I see like two, three hands raising their hands, that's awesome. But that's not the message. The message is those are just to do this. Look, read verse 12. For the equipment of the saint. Okay, let's go back to the 11. And he himself gives some to the apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors, teachers. For what? The equipment of the saint for the work of the ministry. So if you are in those, all we're doing is we're serving. Me as an associate pastor, I'm serving you. Those that don't consider, or maybe you are in those ministry, I'm supposedly encourage you, serve you, so that you know and answer the call to work in the ministry. See, for a long time, what we do is we come to church and we sit down and we let the pastor tell us, you know, yeah, but the, uh, this church used to have 
a sign that when you go outside, I think, that, do we still have it in the back of four years, Scott? But say, now you're entering the mission field. And I, and, and I love that because it's true. It's like, listen, you can come and listen to us. All we're doing, if we are in this five-fold ministry, is supposed to serve you, to equip you, so that you and I work in the ministry together. So that's why I start my service with these pictures and what we're doing outside of Benton because you're doing it. You're doing it. You're doing it. And, it, you know, and if, if you want to know more, uh, I'm not the, uh, I have Damien Pranio Ministries. Inc. Actually, it's under full gospel just like Christian Fellowship is. And I had that before I was hired here. And the only reason that I opened is that Rick Linden and sit down in my living room in Cape Girardeau. And he encouraged me to open it so that we can do this. So through Damien Pranio's ministry, which Damien Pranio ministry is part of Christian Fellowship. With Christian Fellowship, is connected. Actually, Christian Fellowship is one of the reasons why world mission and evangelism exists. So all this is what? We're working in the ministry all together. So that's why one of my friends say, you need to encourage and, and, and share these things so that people know. The people are getting baptized outside of Benton, Kentucky. The people are receiving Jesus. The people are congregated all around the world because you and I are working together. So when you're giving your tithe, when you're giving your offering, when you do all these things, when you are a part, when you pray, when you of a Christian fellowship, guess what? We're working in the ministry together. But beyond that, as I'm in the bed, I'm reconsidering my life. And the number one thing was that I'm doing that for my family. So today as an associate pastor, I'm here to encourage you and serve you with the word of God. That God had called you to work in the ministry. What that means? Well, maybe you are a lawyer. Maybe you are a doctor. Maybe you, that doesn't excuse you to, for you to share who Jesus is with your kids. If you're dying, to, if you know that you're dying tomorrow, what are you going to do? Number one, you're going to be sure that you are going to face God and say, that when he look at you, he's going to say, well done, my son. Don't you? Let's be honest. Let's think like that. If I die tomorrow, what's the first thing that, I, that I'm going to think? Well, that I'm really going to make it? That I'm really going to make it? Number two is if you're going to make it, you realize that you don't want to be selfish. You want other people to make it too. And that's where the simple gospel starts. Why did I so passionate to share about Jesus? Why am I passionate to translate the Bible in different language? Why did I want to go to Argentina? Did I want to move that I'm saying goodbye to Christian fellowship? No, I was, listen, I'm here. God put me here. I love this place. And that's why I'm showing you, even through Damien Pranio Ministry Inc. that I have, even that I have never even talked about it since I'm here because it's not about me. But it is about sharing the gospel. And the gospel is being shared right now. And that's why I'm sharing. As I'm realizing that I could die, I'm realizing, number one, have I done your job, Father? More than, did I leave homes? Did I leave money so Shelly's okay? I'm like, did I leave a legacy the day my kids, if Shelly marry again or whatever, that my kids will be settled and understand that they are called to work in the ministry. See, we don't, we don't talk about that because it's like some have suffered because of the ministry or prefer now to be lawyers, doctors. No, the ministry is not about being a five-fold ministry. See, this is when we're getting confused. I'm not telling my son to be a prophet. I'm not telling my son to be a pastor. I'm not telling my son to be an evangelist. I'm not telling my son to be an apostle of a teacher. That's between him and God. What I am telling my son is whatever he chooses to be in life, that his number one priority will be to answer the call that God have called them. So today I'm telling you, sometimes we read Romans 20. 828 and say all things work together for good for those that love God they have been called so what did that mean well God is calling us right now he's calling you through this message he's saying listen you might not be in the fivefold ministry but that fivefold ministry is to train you so that together we work in the work of the God that's what Ephesians is saying 
So are you working in the things of God? And let me tell you, you are. I just show you plenty of pictures. For some of you, it's financially. You have support financially, and that's why that happened. For some of you, it's like, to me, my doctor, which is right here, and when find the problem in me and help me, I'm alive. Because part of all that, God used him. A good doctor to believe in Jesus Christ. And, and God knows that I needed it because I didn't trust doctors. I was raised in a different way that everything is a scandal in the church. The way that I was raised, it was either witchcraft or the church. So obviously we choose the church. So we'll come and pray. The system was crazy. They don't, the first thing is they don't take you to the hospital. They pray, intercede, and that's it. So I didn't really trust what the doctor will say it was relevant to me. And that God took me to a process to understand that if he, I, David Clinton didn't tell me this one day. He said, Damien, have you ever thought about that you can trust the doctor because you trust in the God is big enough to take care of even the doctor? And I'm like, wow. And God started putting doctors in my life. They are friends. They are amazing. Do they pray with you? Do they look for the best for you? So I see that God is using people like you. So today I'm just, I'm just, I guess I can change my message. Instead of are you answering the call to thank you for answering the call. Because we are not all called in the fivefold ministry. But we are all called to work in the ministry. What that means? A blessing for you and me because a man without purpose is nothing. A woman without purpose is, and God himself has sent his son to die on the cross. So you and I have what? Purpose in life. So now you're saved because of Jesus. And because you're saved because of Jesus, we have this call that we can share with others who Jesus is. And some we're doing it by speaking. And others we do it by singing. Other ones we do it by serving the community, being doctors, being lawyers. being. But we are all called to share who Jesus Christ is. One way and another. Some we're going to do it talking. So another one is doing massage when you need it the most. I'm telling you. I have so much to be thankful. So my message today is like, thank you for answering the call. Thank you. Be encouraged. Keep teaching your kids. Keep being obedient when nobody understands. When God told you to adopt a dog. When God told you to give, give. Because that's the most important thing is to do what he called us to do. And if you, for some reason you have slowed down in what God called you to do, pick up. Pick up your torch and keep doing it. Because if you're going to die tomorrow, if I was going to die, I want to be over there and say, God, did I did it? Did I did everything you called me to do? He is the father. I keep telling my kids. By the way, they're home. Hi, Shelly. I know they're watching there. And the kids, and we all in the process and when to come in, when not to come in. I know that's all whatever. But they're home and uh, they're watching in this moment. But I want my son, and I keep telling them, that they know that I'm their daddy here? And that my job is to help them focus on God. But their real father is God. I don't even know in heaven, I think we're just brothers and sisters over there. You know, the Bible, so many people ask Jesus, they were curious. You know, that I'm going to be married to the same woman and this. So my, my job is, here as associate pastor is to train you, to equip you for the work of the ministry. So it starts in my home. And like I say, I'm not going to tell Isaiah what he needs to be. God is going to tell him. Because he needs to learn how to obey if he's going to be a prophet, if he's going to be an evangelist, if he's going to be a teacher. If he's gonna, he needs to find out for himself. But what I do going to tell him and encourage is that he will understand that he is called to share who Jesus is. We are all called to share who Jesus is. And we have the blessing that we are in Christian fellowship. The Christian fellowship does that. So every time that you are a part of this church, it's more than just come and sing. It's more than just come and read. It's everything that Christian fellowship is doing. 
It's touching the nations with what? With the simple gospel. Simple gospel. And when I was in the bed and I, I told God, and, and listen, in, the, in everything that I just showed you, this lady started prophesying. I, when I went to cry for the nation, I went as a worship leader. I became a worship leader in 1995 in Azusa for the Assembly of God. Before that, my mom used to play the piano. She, we were in church since we were, you know, born and little babies. And she would play and I would sing, but I became a worship leader. So when I went to cry for the nation, I went like, I want to learn more about being a worship leader. I don't want to be a pastor because I don't want to deal with people. So I, when I'm a cry for the nation, God starts showing me that I'm, I, I have a call. And that call is to share the gospel. And if, you know, I'm not putting titles in myself. They put one for me here. I'm the associate pastor. I'm learning how to be a pastor. That's the truth. What I love is to share the gospel. I do. I love it. I love it. I love it. I get in a plane and sometimes it's easier with people to speak the same language that I do. Because, you know, I remember when we went to visit you, there was a, a brother over there that speaks Spanish. We started talking to him. He got saved. He got, as he's having an a issue in his leg, he, he was supposed to go with us to Argentina. We go visit him. Somebody got saved. You know, and honestly, that's, that's maybe the whole reason why you got hurt. So somebody can be saved. In Nashville in a bed. So I love it when people are saying, why? Because I know who my father is. I know who my father is. And I really believe that, that I just want to follow his. And to the, whatever he has for me, for you. So today is an encouragement of saying, keep, like, think about who you are and what you do. Don't let the enemy smash you and say, you haven't done this, you haven't done that. That's not the case. you got to discern the dif difference of something is accusing you, then encouraging you. The Holy Spirit, you know, he can exhort you, but he counsel, he counsel you. He encourages you to be who God called you to be. Satan is going to smash you. You haven't done this, you haven't done that. So why are you saying all this? Because it's, are you answering the call? And for those that are already answering, thank you and keep doing that. Don't excuse yourself and because of what you have become. What you have become, either financially or degrees, is just a vehicle, a platform to do what God called you to do. I see Brad over there. He's inside of all these government things. You're not there for coincidence, brother. You're not. And it's not just a job to give food to the table. You are there because you're supposed to be there. And maybe it's just that every morning you're already praying or you need to pray for that facility that they make the right decisions for our city. But see, if we don't see that, if we don't value it, Satan, you know, I see my father-in-law. He's in a bank. He's not there for a reason. That bank has helped us plenty of time. We have buy houses in the past when we needed it the most. When we come here, they help us. I know that they pray. I know that he pray. So it's beyond who you are. Don't let the enemy just blind you. Don't let the enemy blind you. You have a call. You have a call to work in the ministry. What that means? It's not what we have seen. The ministry is not just this. So when we talk about that, it's like, no, it's not that. The ministry is, you know who Jesus is. You share about Jesus. Some of you have blessed me. As I'm going through all this, God knew, Richie, sit down and start looking at my finances to help me. And you say, oh, my Lord, what's going on with you? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, people start giving big donations. And bless me, and one specifically took me to his office and said, God have not let me sleep. So I want for him to let me sleep. So here you go, and they give me cash. To me, more the cash, you know what I value the most? That God was speaking to this man. And that he was showing me something that I want to do too. I want to listen and obey. So more than that, that I was needed of, God was using him. God was speaking to him. 
And that's what I want my kids and you as a church to understand. We have a call. And when we answer this call, just like the day that you say, Jesus, I give you my heart and I give you my mind and I give you my soul. That's when you answer the call. But see, sometimes we stay there. We stay in salvation. That's awesome. You're saved. That's awesome. But what about the call when, we, when you get saved? There's a call. See, we're getting saved by Jesus. I give you my heart. I give you my mind. I give you my soul. But what, you, what we are saying is you own me. And because you own me now, I belong to you. And because I belong to you, I have a purpose. In countries that the king owns anything, everything, in the past, it was like the king owns it all. So there's nothing. You know, it, it, nothing is yours. It's theirs. That's what happened when you and I give our heart to Jesus. Yes, we are saved. And yes, he will know you now. Why? Because you belong to him. But my question is, it's time to take it even deeper. Yes, I'm saved. I'm going with him. But that I'm answering the call so more people can know you. And I'm going to leave you with this verse. That you know it and I know it. But in Matthew 28, 19, Jesus says this. And some say, well, it was for the disciple only. No, because the whole Bible teaches about love God and love your neighbor. The whole Bible teaches about the, he died on the cross so that you and everybody can be saved. The Bible teaches me that he had put uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, uh, pastors and teachers to equip the church, to equip the people to the work of the ministry. What that means once again, the call of Jesus, of sharing who Jesus is to other, to mentor. Some are going to do it like Rick used to do it. You get a lot of millennials and, and a lot of people around. It makes more sons and more daughters. Some are going to do it by adopting. Some are going to do it by going and praying every morning in their government place. Some are going to do it by being inside of the fivefold ministry. Some are going to do it by massaging people. Some are going to do it by donating money because God has blessed them with money. Some are going to do it by helping tooth and a certain... You know, doing that and being a dentist, God is using them to show love, to show compassion. That's the whole point. But we can no longer keep our mouth shut about it. We got to understand who we are in God and the call that God has for us. And this is what Jesus is speaking right here. I have it in red. I love it because it reminds me that Jesus said it. Matthew says, go, therefore, and make disciples. And that's it. Go. Go. He's giving that. Go. I die on the cross for you. And then what do you do? You answer the call or not? Yes, I answer the call. God, I give you my heart. I give you my mind. I give you my soul. Thank you for saving me. Yeah, but then he say, go. Go. I give you purpose right now. I give you purpose right now. So the question is, are we focusing on him like he's focusing on us? Or are we just living our life? Because you can live, I can live my life just being a pastor. And then I go in front of God and he say, I don't know you. What do you mean you don't know me? I preach in your name. I have done this. I prophesy, demon cast down. He say, I don't know you. So what is the difference? Once again, David said last Sunday that he knows me. So how did I know that he knows me? When I'm obedient to him. When I'm obedient to him. That nine acres building that we have in Argentina, God gave it to us. And all we took for us to be obedient, my dad and I went to Argentina. We sit with this group of nuns. And we buy in a place that right before the pandemic, somebody offered, offered us a million dollar, 970,000 they offered us for that land. You know what my dad said? But there, it was a great, an amazing ministry with people involved even from the United States. God shut the doors, but even before he shut it, my dad was like, if it this happened, because we knew that that place is supposed to be a place for people to know who Jesus is. That's it. So when my dad 
think of those numbers, you will think like, oh man, he was happy that he's going to get the money. Because that place, my dad bought it out of his own money. We put money there and whatever, but never put people money. Yes, the place was paid from the family. So you can say, well, it's our money. No, my, do you know what my dad said? Right before Shelly called and said, Damien is bad. They diagnosed him with cancer. We don't know if he, we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. My dad said, he went and prayed and said, Lord, let him live. And I will continue living my life. To be sure that he continues serving you. So when he had this offer. You know he was thinking. He was thinking of paying my mortgage off. So that I can go preach even more. Listen. I have been blessed from a father. That his priority is. That his sons. Serve Jesus. And answer the call. I record in 2004 an album. Preparing the time and moment. It's in Spanish. It's all an evangelist album. They talk about just share the gospel, pure gospel. You know who pay all that? My dad. You know why? Because his focus as a dad is that I know that I got a call from the father. And that I answer the call and that I'm obedient. So my question is, are you answering the call? Because Jesus is saying, cool. And the other thing that says right there, make. Go and make. And actually, in other verses say, all authority have been given to you. So I said to you, therefore, go and make disciples to all nations. And say, in my name, you will cast out demons. You put hands and people be healed, which is true. I seen it with my own eyes. And today I'm alive because of a miracle. I consider it a miracle. But I have been in a situation that God does a miracle in a different way. Like in California in the year 2001, a kid drawn in a pool. And before they, they called 911, fighting, fighting, before all that happened by praying, that kid come back alive. So I seen it. But my focus is not in that. Why? My focus is, should be in answering his call. That's it. And by answering his call, we're going to see things happening because all we're doing is we are being obedient to him. That's it. So when you and I are obedient to him, he heals who he want to heal. Who re he restores who he want to restore. He transforms who he, because that's who he is. So to, to the day, I'm just sharing this so that you and I together revalue our life and say, that's awesome. I have accomplished a lot of things. See, my dad could have said, man, I have accomplished that I'm a million-dollar man. And honestly, they offer that because of the, the economy is messed up. Otherwise, that place is more than a million dollars. But you know what? My dad wasn't even interested about the money. What he was interested, even if it happened, he was like, it's going to continue being for the serve of the, the ministry. So... That's, that's why he's not devastated if it happened or it doesn't happen because the place was given by God from God to the use of God. That's why you have a house. That's why you have a roof. That's why you have a business. It's because you have answering the call. And if you haven't, revalue your life. Don't let the economy collapse for you to realize that everything is his. Don't let something happen. Don't let the diagnosis of cancer to make you realize that maybe you haven't done everything that he called you. So when I wake up and I'm running now, what I want to do? One, I want to be better to my friends. I want to be better to my family. I want to, number one, to my own kids. Keep teaching them that they are called to work for Jesus. That Jesus himself said, go and make. Go and make. You all know we work in this disciple to make disciple. And that's awesome. That's an amazing strategy. But today is even more than that. All of us are called to go. Therefore, go. So today as an Ephesians 4.11, I'm just encouraging you that you are called. Regardless if you are functioning in those departments, you are called. I love Christian Fellowship. I love Christian Fellowship School. I miss it because I get chapels every Tuesday. And I get this blessing to encourage some of your kids. 
And they're all here. And every Tuesday, I have to pray to God and share more about God. Praying and hoping that they will understand that they're called. That they one day leave, yes, they might become dentists, they might become doctors, they might become whatever they become. It's just something temporal. Temporal. But what is eternal is the purpose and the call of God in your life. So don't forget that. Be encouraged. Don't let the enemy blind you. You are something. You are somebody. There are things happening even in this church. Well, another of my friends, another testimony. Because of this church and God speaking through this church. He wasn't wanting to teach no more second and third graders. But God spoke to him in different ways through a nurse in a hotel, through this church. And now he knows, and that's the most important thing, he knows that he's supposed to be a man of influence to second and third graders' kids. And because he knows that, guess what? God is using him, and he's answering the call. So are you answering your call? And I'm telling you right now what it is. It's the ministry. So clean up in your head what the ministry is, because the ministry is not the fivefold. The ministry is him. The ministry is sharing who he is. Are you doing your job? Are you doing your job? And many that I talk and those testimonies that I give earlier, when I'm listening to my friends, I'm so proud because they are obeying what God said and they're answering. And I know that you too. So once again, thank you, Christian Fellowship. Thank you. Be more informed on what is happening because you are doing it through Christian fellowship. You are doing it through Christian fellowship. So let's pray right now. Father, I thank you. I thank you that you call us. It's like that song, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. You call me friend. Sometimes we forget that you are seriously wanting to use us. That you call us friend. That you call us to the work of the ministry. So it doesn't matter if you have a, I'm an owner of a hotel or, or you. The most important thing is that you have given us purpose. 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 We are alive because of you. We are breathing in and breathing out because of you, Lord. Because of you. And right now we're speaking to this church, not projects about tomorrow or not. It's like, God, we are right here right now understanding that we have a call. So help us to be the best father my son can have. Help us to be the best husband, the best, best wife. But above all, Lord, above being a great doctor, a lawyer, help us to be what you call us to be. Help us to share and not be quiet about you. And whatever way we're doing it, we are going to do the best because you're real. And I know, Lord, that one day we are going to face you. We are going to go and see you face to face. But until that happens, help us to be the best, the best ambassadors, the best sons and daughters to share who you are with everything that we are. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And amen. They'll, oh, I thought you were going to have a word. And I was like, good, Papa. <laughs> Whew. So I don't want to leave you with this. But if you say, listen, Damien, I really received this word. And I believe that there's purpose, deeper things for me to do. Just stand up with me. If you say, I am called by God, and I'm going to continue doing that. Stand up. And I hope that you listen to the message, but either you stand up or not, you are called. <laughs> if it's not, they have it on Facebook, they're recorded, listen it again. I'm telling you, it's, if you believe that I'm the associate pastor, and that I'm inside of that fivefold ministry, if you believe that, I'm telling you today, I'm exhorting you today, 
by reading that verse and say, that fivefold ministry is to train and equip the people to the ministry. And I'm not putting myself about you. We are all the same. We are all sons and daughters. That's it. All we have is a title, a position. But that position is so that you can use it to serve. That's it. It's just to serve. To serve others. To serve others. And I hope that we're doing it in Jesus Christ. Like I just said earlier about Brad, about friends, about you, about people. In the moment that you put Jesus in that, that you know that you're called and everything that you have is because of him and you're using it. You're answering the call. And guess what? You go from knowing him to know that he knows you because you are being obedient to him. God bless you. And I think we're going to exit however we do it every Sunday. So God bless you, bless you, bless you. And once again, thank you so much to be a part of Christian Fellowship. We love you. Thank you, Brother Lenny. That's another testimony. That man do all the plumbing in my house when I need it the most. I'm not joking. It's amazing. Love you guys. Thank you for being here.